And here with us now is co-founder of the Stringfield Theory, professor of theoretical physics at the City College and City University of New York, Dr. Michio Kaku. He's the author of The Future of the Mind, The Scientific Quest to Understand, Enhance, and Empower the Mind. Doctor, it's great to have you here. It's amazing to think, and as we see in that film, Her, and the question that Samantha, played by Scarlett Johansson, posing, is this real or programming? That type of scenario we're not that far off from, and that's what you explore with this book. Explain to us where we are in the understanding of the brain. Well, Hollywood gets it first, right? But remember the movie The Matrix, when you push yes. a button and become a karate master? Or Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger, where her memories are simply put into mind? We're on the border now, the brink, the threshold of initiating all these wondrous things. Think about it. Telepathy, reading minds, telekinesis, moving objects with, with the mind, uploading memories, even photographing a dream. These are things that are being done in the laboratory today, not tomorrow. But when we look at movies like iRobot or Eagle Eye or these films that have such high-tech scenarios that are playing out, it seems as if the human experience is totally lost to then this technology that takes over control. So what is our fail-safe as we continue to explore, continue to learn? Is there a fail-safe to protect us from our own advances? <laughs> well, when you watch movies like iRobot, you think that robots are going to take over and they're going to put us in zoos and throw peanuts at us as we dance behind bars. Right. No. That's many, many decades in the future. However, what <laughs> is happening now in the laboratory is that we're beginning to understand our own brain. Not a robot brain, but our own brain. We're beginning to understand how memories are formed, why we have super geniuses who can do fantastic mathematical calculations in their head, and photographing your thoughts and using your thoughts to energize machines so that the mind is not going to be replaced. The mind will be interfacing with machines, controlling machines mentally. So for generations we have probably known more about the moon or Mars than we have known about the brain. So as, as you skim through this incredibly important and really interesting book, what are the, what are the, what's going to happen? What's the impact of all of this research, all of this study on things like Asperger's or Alzheimer's or cognitive issues that perhaps people are born with, brain-related cognitive issues? What happens? President Barack Obama and the European Union have pledged over a billion dollars, that's B, billion with a B, not an M, a billion dollars on the next big thing after the Human Genome Project, and that is the Brain Initiative, to sequence and map the entire human brain. I mean, think about it. We'll be able to understand what is schizophrenia, what is bipolar disorder, mental illness. That's going to be the short term. Even farther down the line is having a brain pacemaker for people with Alzheimer's disease. We are now understanding how memories are being formed, so why not create memories that are useful for people suffering from Alzheimer's? That's called the uh, brain pacemaker, and the first memory was inserted into a mouse last year. That's how pathbreaking and how fast this is moving. And think about this. If we have a uh, memory stored on a disk with all your neural networks on it, and it will live after you die, meaning that just like in her, perhaps some of you will live forever. Your memories, your personality, your goals, your dreams will live in a computer. And perhaps your great, 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 great grandkids will have a conversation with you long after you're dead. It's very interesting. <laughs> doctor, I want to send you down to Koki Roberts, our panelist in D.C., with a question. Koki. Yes, doctor. Those of us of a certain age want to know uh, about this memory pill that you, are, uh, that you talk about in the book and say that uh, it could be sooner rather than later. How soon, please? <laughs> First of all, we are creating forgetful pills now, not tomorrow, right now, for people with traumatic experiences like wartime injuries. And we're beginning to understand now the memory process. For example, there are many instances where some people get hit on the left side of their head and become a super mathematical genius. This is something right out of the comic books, but it's well documented. And after this program, for God's sake, do not hit yourself on the left side of your head. You're going to have barnacle clock face. <laughs> Trying to become a super genius after this show what, is over. What about seizures? People suffer epileptic seizures, brain seizures. What, what about, what's that in the, in the study about that? Well, for example, people with Parkinson's who, who, who shake uncontrollably, you can actually see that there's a part of the brain 
in a brain scan that's overactive, that lights up, we can put a probe directly into that part of the brain and nullify it, quiet that part of the brain. Now? Now. This is today. This is one of the standard ways of treating Parkinson's disease. Also, people who are clinically depressed and have resisted psychotherapy and psychiatry and psychology, brain scans reveal that certain parts of the brain, again, are overactive. By putting tiny little needles into the brain painlessly, you can quiet that area. And I've seen videotapes. A person is suicidal one instant and the right. next instant, joy and, and tremendous vigor coming into that person's face. It's amazing what you can do because we're now beginning wow. to unravel the human thinking process. It's incredible advances ahead of us. Doctor, it's great to have you here. The book is called The Future of the Mind. You can read an excerpt on our site, mojo.msnbc.com. Dr.